This video is rather simple. I'm going to provide you with a full guide to laser engraving. Laser engraving is a rather new concept and hasn't received the popularity it deserves. For that reason, not many tutorials or guides exist. And for those that do exist, it's always about the money. With people reportedly making tens of thousands of dollars, let's see how much money I can make. I don't like this approach. Why focus on the profits instead of the product? Perhaps that way of thinking makes me broke, but laser engravers aren't about profit. They're made for artists. Keychains, frames, bookmarks, coasters, miniatures, decor, the possibilities go on and on. And with so many possibilities, I hope I can continue to make more and more things with the laser engraver in the future. But even though I'm so young, time isn't infinite. Luckily, knowledge is infinite, and I hope to expand the laser engraving community so more people can make more fun things like me. And so I can get some more views. Come on guys, get on board! In this video, we'll go over what laser engraving is, how to choose a machine for yourself, and how to use one. If you're looking to start laser engraving but don't know a single thing, you've come to the right place. A laser engraver is simple. It's a machine that moves a laser beam around in order to cut or engrave an object. Yes, the power of lasers are real and could be yours. The machine has the ability to change the speed of the laser head as well as the power. If you're wondering what's the difference between a laser cutter and a laser engraver, there is none. A laser cutter is just a laser engraver at full power. But we'll just refer to this machine as a laser engraver. Using a laser, the machine can easily cut wood, paper, cardboard, or anything related. This is because a laser is very similar to a fire and organic materials similar to wood are easy to burn through. A laser engraver can also cut plastic, metal, leather, fabrics, and stones. However, these materials are a bit more iffy and depend on exactly what you're cutting. Some materials such as metal and stones are better off being engraved instead. After all, burning through rock or a metal plate is hard to picture. Certain plastics can melt when cut as well. Be sure to research materials before you cut them. For example, clear acrylics like these cannot be cut with a diode laser that we'll be using today, and they need a special expensive CO2 laser. I definitely did not have to learn that the hard way. That leads to choosing an engraver. There are mainly two factors to keep in mind. The laser wattage and the laser engraving build. Wattage refers to the power limit of the machine. For example, on Amazon, laser engravers will often have 10 watt, 20 watt, and 40 watt labels. Ideally, you'd always want a more powerful laser because, as noted before, laser engraver power can always be controlled to go down within its range. However, the higher the wattage, the more expensive. Laser engravers can range from $2,000 to only a couple hundred, so you have to be smart. If you're a normal, poor individual, choose a wattage that you'll actually need. 10 watt lasers work great for crafts, cutting around 4 millimeters or 1 8 inch material. 40 watt ones can do bigger projects with 12 millimeter or 1 half inch materials. But it isn't always about the thickness. A high laser power allows for faster cutting. While a 10 watt laser can cut through a piece of wood slowly and steadily, a 40 watt laser can blaze through it. Keep this in mind if you want to use a machine for mass production. The engraver build is equally as important. Laser engravers often look like this or this. Open laser engravers are just the machine, a square frame, and a laser engraving head with some basic controls. These are the cheapest and simplest engravers and often need extra additions. An air assist, which blows air around the laser while it's engraving to prevent burns by cooling around the area, as well as pushing away soot. A honeycomb panel, which protects your table from being burned. After all, a laser is a dangerous thing, and it will cut through whatever is under it. 
A honeycomb panel works like a cutting board and safely absorbs the laser's energy. The other option are enclosed laser engravers. These machines are often more expensive because they have more of a build. They create a nice little home for your engraver so that the smoke and laser can be safely secured and controlled. You don't have to worry about this happening or this. Crumbs can be kept at bay and it blocks any laser exposure from hitting your eyes. In my honest opinion, enclosed laser engravers are much better, but they aren't necessary. I do suggest choosing an enclosed one if you can afford it. After all, it's better not to cheap out on such a useful and expensive machine. To get a better understanding of laser engravers, let's use one. This is the Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt laser engraver by Creality. I'll be using this machine as an example in this video because it's a new top of the line machine that can show the upper limit of what a laser engraver is and its abilities. But any other machine won't be much different. The machine will come in a large box. Some engravers need assembly, some don't. This one does. Each brand of laser engraver is different and comes with different items. But I suggest one tip when unboxing any laser engraver. Don't do it in front of your wife. I do not have a wife nor a girlfriend, and I find a way to celebrate such. An additional, much less important tip is to choose an engraver wisely. Look for reviews on YouTube or Amazon. Even I make a few reviews from time to time. Choosing a laser engraver is quite an investment, so it's best not to mess up. Now, how do you use a laser engraver? It's an intimidating machine for sure. Most of the people using this machine will be middle-aged, not young like me, and sometimes it's difficult to adapt to new technologies. But I promise you it's very much manageable. There are three simple steps in the laser engraving process. Designing, slicing, and cutting. Designing depends of course on what you're making, but in general, you'll be using 2D images. The edges of an image define the lines in which a machine will cut, and if you're engraving, it is simply the engraved area. An image with values will express how light the engraving will be. This makes using an engraver really simple, and all you really need to know is how to use some basic digital editing program. Or maybe just the internet. Next, you'll need to send that image into a program which tells the engraver what to do. In 3D printing, this is called slicing, so I'm just going to call it that here too. Many slicing programs exist, but the most simplistic of them is LaserGBRL, which used to have a friggin' Pokemon as its logo, but now it's boring. First, connect your device to the laser engraver, open up the program, and upload your design. I want to cut this instead of engrave it, so I'll choose Vector. The program kinda gives you a preview of what you're doing, and now you can input the power and speed. This is the tricky part. What settings do you use? D don't look at me. I don't know. Power and speed is tricky because it's different for every single project. A fast speed and half of the power might cut wood easily on a 40 watt, but what if you have a 10 watt laser? Now it's full power at a slow speed. What if you're engraving? What speed and power gives you a deep dark burn or a light engraving? Basically what I'm telling you is, you have to find the settings for yourself and use that brain of yours. There are no wrong or right settings, just settings that work and those that don't. If you're a smart person, you can use your engraver and make a matrix to visualize it, but that's what light burn users do. Instead, you can be like me and just guess. Max power and a low speed is usually good for cutting. And since this is a 40 watt laser, I probably should put it a little lower. In fact, most people often say not to use your laser at max power because it wears it down faster. So let's just do 90%. Measure your design on the wood, input the size, and that's basically all the settings you need to know for a beginner. Once you click start, the laser will cut, and now you have your first laser engraving project done.
Congratulations, the tutorial is over. Let's go home now. Shit, this is my home. Fine, let's do more. Laser GBRL is simple and free, being compatible with most desktop laser engravers. But many laser engravers, including this one, prefer Lightburn as their slicer. This is because Lightburn is better and my wallet is smaller. Lightburn has much more features and allows for the usage of cameras. This is actually wonderful for the Falcon 2 Pro which has a camera and helps with aligning cuts. Without a camera, you'd have to use this laser dot as an origin and align cuts from there. For this engraver, it does require two USB ports, one for the camera and one for the software. And since my laptop kind of sucks, I have to bring this bad boy on. Engraving is just like cutting, but just weaker, so it cuts only a little bit. It goes back and forth to remove a good chunk of the wood. You can get creative and combine the two to cut out and shape the materials of your choice. You can also utilize multiple passes. Can't get your laser to cut the material you want? Just get the engraver to run it three times. This is especially helpful because you can't actually tell when a cut is done. You just have to pick it up and pray. With a raised bed like this, you can see if the laser has traveled through to confirm if the material has been cut. Honestly, there's not much to it. All you have to do is play around with the machine. Try using the engraver, cut out whatever you want, mess up a couple times, and come out successful. Plus, if you ever need help, me and about a thousand other white people will be there for you. Now, some final tips you should consider. Materials are rather important. Laser engravers can engrave a lot of things. I mean, there's no rule. Just whatever dumb idea pops into your head. You can even engrave on cylindrical objects using a rotary tool many engravers provide. Whether it's pre-made products or raw materials, anything is fair game. Of course, there are consequences to cutting certain materials, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Just know that each material needs different settings to be cut or engraved well even different wood types. For a beginner, I suggest starting with wood since that's the main materials engravers are made for. You can buy tons of materials online, at a hardware store, and maybe hobby stores. What about maintenance? Laser engravers surprisingly don't need much upkeep since the technology is rather simple. The most you'll need to do is clean the laser engraving lens and wipe down the dust. If your engraver somehow manages to break, your engraver should have come with tools to help repair it, and most likely the company will allow you to order new parts. I personally have never broken any of my engravers despite handling around 10 different engravers on my channel. In comparison, I have had to maintain and repair my resin printers and FDM printers. Perhaps the last thing I want to touch upon is safety. Why put it near the end of the video? Well. Safety is one of those things that really only matters that 1% of the time, and is rather boring. By putting this near the end, I'll get the information to those who really care. Rest easy, laser engravers are one of the safest workshop tools, lacking any blades, toxic chemicals, or heavy machinery. The two dangers laser engravers offer is laser exposure and fumes. To be clear, you aren't going to burn yourself with this laser not like Star Wars. It's extremely difficult to get your hands stuck under a laser, and even then, they don't burn moist objects too well. This engraver even comes with a key to make sure your kids somehow don't access the engraver. I would like to see a pair of toddlers figure out how to hurt themselves with this thing. What is more dangerous is laser eye damage. Most good laser engravers provide protective goggles to wear when engraving but no one really wears them. I'm guilty of that too. They provide them because legally, a laser is actually really bad for your eyes and they need safety precautions. The laser probably won't shoot directly into your eyes, but over time, the reflections and stray light can slowly damage your eyesight if you're exposed to it too much, and you might never realize it. To remedy this, you should force yourself to always wear goggles or try not to look at the machine while it's cutting. The best solution to this is to invest in an enclosed engraver, which prevents this problem entirely. Personally, I'm blind enough, so it would be nice to prevent more blindness in my 50s. 
That leads to fumes. Fumes are a much more obvious problem. For instance, cutting wood produces smoke, and breathing in smoke is terrible for your lungs and is rather uncomfortable. This gets even worse if you decide to cut synthetic materials like plastic, which can release much more toxic and harmful chemicals. The remedy for this is much more tricky. Open laser engravers have a tough time because there's nothing controlling the fumes from going everywhere. That is why I do not recommend placing an open engraver anywhere inside your house. A garage is manageable, but ensure you always open the garage door and perhaps a side door for air circulation. You can even put it outside on a porch if you're privileged enough to live in California weather. The best solution, again, is to get an enclosed engraver. These have a ventilation system to divert the smoke out and away. In conclusion, if safety is something you care about, just get an enclosed engraver. The extra money is always worth the health and safety. The last bit of knowledge I have to share today is the following. Be sure to make some more fun. Laser engravers aren't just about money or whatever they're marketed as. Just like a paintbrush, it's a useful tool to bring color into your world. And I only hope that you can master it. Be creative, make something new, something interesting, or something fun. Maybe then money will come to you naturally. Hasn't worked for me yet though. But hey, if you ever need ideas, or maybe a bit of convincing to get into laser engraving, check out my channel. Most of the laser engraving examples seen in this video were made by me after all. And if you're interested in the Creality Falcon 2 Pro, check the description below. As always, thank you for watching.